When you get to the pros, mm -hmm. the swim, swim or drown, you know, eat or be killed type oh, mentality. After seeing that, I just like work my tail off, bro. All right, man, we have a, another one, another special guest today. You know, I got to give him the, the special intro. Coming in, <laughs> number 22, <laughs> from Grand Rapids, Michigan, <laughs> Monte, <laughs> Big Game Tay, <laughs> Morris. My boy. Hey, man, thank you, thank you so, don't, thank you so much for being here. Yes, Man, I know it's been a couple of trips for you guys, road trip, but man, appreciate you. Appreciate you though. Nice love, Me here. Yeah. So, okay, let's say we meet for the first time or at all. Who are you? Who who's Monte, man? Um, I mean Monte Morris. I'm a obviously you know a basketball player, but um, you know I'm a great I'm a great uh, friend, great son. Um, I'm just an all around kind of guy who like having fun and just living life and. Um, just impacting other people's lives, you know, in any way possible um, that can be. So, obviously, basketball is what brings money, but I'm just trying to do more than that and explore other talents as well while doing so. Yeah, sir. This is this is, you know, this is why we're here too. We just, you know, through our stories, through your uh, experiences, just you know, try to motivate people who watch this video, the listeners yeah. who are listening to it. So. Yeah, so when did you start playing? Like, um, um, I started playing ball about like four years old. Um, my mom hey. was, my mom was, uh, she actually played, and then she she played in my high school that I also attended. Um, so at Beecher High School, and then I was just always um, mess up her practices when she would coach the JV and varsity girls, um, and I just started dribbling a ball around all the time, and kind of got the love from it from there. Right. So you. Uh, but you play in Michigan, so you started in Michigan. You played yeah, there. Yeah, yep, in Flint, yep. So 2013, mm -hmm. you won an amazing award for being one, you know, one of the best there. You ended up, you know, first of all, I've done my research. So you yeah. ended, you, you ended up for your whole 40 years, bro, mm -hmm. leading the team in every stat, yeah. every category. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, for people who are listening or tuning in, when I say every stat, I mean, like, points, rebounds, assists, everything. yeah. yeah. How how is that? What's, what's that? Um, I mean, for me, I mean, I started. I had the opportunity to start varsity as a freshman. I was only like five foot eight, like a hundred and like thirty pounds, if that. My freshman year of high school, and um, we lost like four or five seniors. They end up going to uh, the state finals, but they end up coming up short. And our head coach, when I was in the eighth grade, came and watched me play. He was like, "You're gonna be my starting point guard the following year." And in my head, I'm like. I always dreamed about playing varsity, but I was so smaller than everybody, so I was always kind of nervous. And I got the opportunity, and we started off that season my freshman year, 0-5, and, um, and like we was getting bashed in the newspaper. They were saying like a freshman can't take them, do this and that, and I kind of had that chip on my shoulder and turned the season around. We ended up going to the States and losing in the Final Four when I was I was only 14 years old, so it was a lot on my on my plate, but. After that season, I kind of grew to my height now. I ain't never yeah. grow again, but <laughs> kind of hit a big growth spurt from 5'8 to here, and I um, went to state every year after that. So it was good. It was good, man. Mm -hmm. And then, I think mean, you do that, you go to high school. Yeah. I can only imagine, like, being 14, man, just mm -hmm. going to the uh, yeah. for this. It was a lie. It was a guy. It was a guy named Michael Talley. He ended up playing at um, Dayton um, University. He Dayton, Ohio? Yeah, okay. he ended up playing at Dayton. But he was like a he was a dog. He was a senior. I was a freshman. But my coach is like a real hard headed coach. So he in a newspaper, like, I got a freshman too. You know, I got but he was a senior at the time. He was like an all American and he talked me up a good game. This guy like 18, he already filled out. I'm this 14 year old kid. And Tally had like 36 points on us. Like he was killing me. Like I, I couldn't really get past him on offense. And after that game, you know, he just told me, like, he seen something in me, Michael Talley, after the game. He was like, if you keep going, you know, you could be better than me. So after hearing that from somebody, I was like, all right, I see what level I got to get to. So I, you know, took that as motivation and kind of ran with it. As more of the, just a piece of advice, mm -hmm. you know, just a word of encouragement can uh, motivate you, man. Yeah. 
okay, you, so you go there, then you go to high school, right? Mm. After you finish with high school, you get recruited from Butler, mm. by Butler. You yeah. get recruited by Arizona State, Cincinnati, yeah. you know, like Georgia Tech, all mm-hmm. these schools. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go to Iowa State. Iowa State. Yeah. How? How? Uh, man. I mean, you know, it's respectful schools. I'm not from here, no, but, sure. you know, I've heard about the yeah. schools and they I've heard they have a great basketball program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was more so, um, yeah, for me, it was more so trying to go to a school that really wasn't n- known as of late in basketball. So I always wanted to, like, when I was done there, I wanted to have a chance to be all time in in uh, statistics, so. Okay. And also just wanted to be remembered, you know, no knock to like the big schools like Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, mm-hmm. but they see five-star athletes come through there every year. You know, I wanted to start my own trend and get guys coming to Iowa State. So I had the opportunity to come in and fight for a starting job my freshman year, but we ended up signing DeAndre Kane. He was a fifth-year guy. Yeah, I, he's my draft. Yeah, DeAndre, yeah, 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 so. He was just bullying me in practice. Like, you know, he was six years older than physical, me. Physical, physical player, Physical, yeah. Like 6'5", 220. I come in like 148, 6'2", my height. <laughs> and I had to go against him every day in practice. And it kind of like shaped me because I didn't start my freshman year to like February. When our two guards, we tried to play with the lineup and I ended up starting alongside DeAndre and um, took off from there from February all the way to the NCAA tournament. And they had me like on a breakout list my sophomore year and – the rest was kind of like I kind of made my jump, but as far as other schools, I had a relationship with mostly everybody at the school. Brad Stevens was the head coach at Butler. He was really, really he mm-hmm. was really interested in me. Um, and then Arizona State, you know, the weather was warm out there. They had some uh, good, <laughs> attractive things, like as far as like <laughs> just like partying and stuff. Okay. As a young kid, mm-hmm. like and James Harden was like my my chauffeur on my visit in like 2012. Really? So yeah, it was Shout a fun James, time. Man. Yeah, James, I was like 16 years old and I'm like, Ma, I want to commit right now. Like <laughs> this school, like amazing. She was like, son, you three hours, you know, behind me, it's going to be hard for me to watch your games and stuff. So I oh, took okay. I took that into consideration as well. Yeah, man. And then um, Coach Cornell, um, he, he head coach at Grand Valley State right now in Grand Rapids. He was the assistant coach at Iowa State. He was from Detroit and I'm from, Flint. So it was kind of like just connection. Like connection, you know what I'm saying? And I knew I could trust him with my future because he he was a guy who was kind of recruit me since I was a freshman, but we never really thought Iowa State would be the place. So we always put it on the back burner. Like, ain't nobody going to Iowa State. So that's kind of yeah. how we moved. But then that was my that was my calling. So it was cool. Oh man. I'm yeah. I shoot. You turned out good. Yeah. You turned out sure. well. Yeah. Um Okay, you get to college, you do all these things. Man, so you was with DeAndre, physical player, man. Right? Yeah, guy. physical, bro. Um, I needed that though. Yeah, I, I yeah. remember we had a physical drop combine with this guy. <laughs> like it was, oh, it was me, him, and uh, and Marcus Smart. Like yeah, we yeah, was yeah, Marcus Smart. Yeah, it was all uh, in Chicago too. So okay, then you know we have something in common, right? What's that? We both got drafted at number fifty-one. Oh, okay. yeah, I got, I got yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from <laughs> Knicks, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, you get drafted from different nuggets. Mm-hmm. So you you come to the NBA, man. Yeah. How, how was your pre-draft? Pre-draft was crazy, man. I had probably 17 workouts lined up. I was only able to do four of them. I, I did LA, Why? Sacramento, Orlando, and Indiana. I was in uh, the Lakers workout. We do like the three-quarter sprint test. I had a great workout. It was like me, Josh Hart in there. Uh, Blossom game, like we had a lot of guys. Juwan Evans at the time, and I take off, I do the drill, and I pull my quad, pull it, crazy. So I had so many workouts lined up. I think that's why I kind of failed at late too, because a lot of teams was interested in around 28 to 40, and like Brooklyn was high on me, and they had like 27, um, a couple other teams, but I couldn't work out for them. They actually flew me to Brooklyn just to see my thing and it was like messed up because they thought I was going to be able to push through and just play because they just wanted to see me work out, you know what I'm saying? But I couldn't do none of it and pull up my quad. So that's why I wasn't able to do my workout. So pre-draft was kind of up and down for me. Then draft night come, I really didn't know where I was going to end up. It just keep going down the list, keep going down the list. The draft was at seven. I didn't get picked to probably like close to midnight. So it was tough. Right? So You know. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. exactly what you mean, but yeah. hey. You got picked now. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and One to six. There's not a lot of people 
on a 60 mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. I don't think people realize this in the exactly. world, bro. Exactly. You guys, you have guys who can get picked from the entire planet. You can pick somebody anywhere in the anywhere. world, bro, and you get, you 60, get picked. Yeah. It's you crazy. Get picked. Yeah. So it's congratulations, brother. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You go to Denver. Yeah. Are you excited? You were what, like, what's your... Did you know you was going to Denver? Uh, and they kind of called me and just was like, uh, this was the first year of two ways too. So it was, you know, I was the guy, me and Tori Craig was on the roster. Oh, we, shout out to Tori, man. Yeah. We, we were teammates, championship year. Yeah, we, we, was, we was two way guys for the Nuggets. Okay. Um, first year of it. So we was trying to figure out this whole 45 day thing and how we was going to get paid. So it was just, it was an experience that I never, you know, it's kind of like the bubble situation. I feel like hopefully we ain't got to go through that again, but. We can tell, you know, kids and everything about it that who probably want to experience it. And I could say the same about my two way year. So I get drafted to Denver. I'm kind of excited, but I still was like the four point guard on depth chart because at the time we had Jameer Nelson still there, Manuel Moutier, and Jamal Murray. And, Jamal Murray. and I was the Oof. fourth guy. So it's four. Yeah. So I was just like, man, I already knew I was going to have to play in the G League my first year. So anytime I got up with the guys, I was just trying to show I belong. But it was tough because Jameer had just came off of starting and now they trying to see who gonna win out of Jamal and Emmanuel. So I was just a guy who was like an extra. Yeah, who gonna win the, the, start, the starting position. The starting position. So okay. when training camp come, I get probably like one rep, bro, out of the whole training camp. Like, cause Jameer fighting to still play. And Jamal and Emmanuel, they just like head to head, every drill, everything. and. I try to get in. Jameer like, watch out, Rook, you ain't getting in. <laughs> and Oof. Jamal, Emmanuel, it and wasn't nobody like really pulling for me, like, you know, and that just showed me like it, people playing for their lives, like this their livelihood. You know, people got families. It was an eye opener to me. Like it ain't college, like, you know, so. It's not college, bro. Yeah, it ain't. I don't yeah. think people get that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you get to, it's a certain way, you get to build up and rap, you know, when you get to the pros, mm -hmm. you know, either here or overseas, yeah, you know. Yeah, you just straight work. Straight what you work. have to, what you have to give. Whatever you have at the moment, you give. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. Like, hey. yeah, that showed me right there. It's kind of like, you know, swim, swim or drown. You know, eat or be killed type oh mentality. It, so it, I kind of like, after seeing that, I just like work my tail off, bro. That whole G League, my first year in the G League, I didn't even like, I wasn't complaining. Like I would travel my whole apartment almost in one big ass suitcase, like, and like I get the RGV and put my TV on my suitcase, play my game, then call me back up. Cause I would never know like how long I would be up. Like, you know, we got caught up. We had to meet the team at OKC, me and Tori Craig in the okay, exit road. We got on Nugget stuff. They like, you play for the Nuggets? You in the NBA? We like, yeah, something like that. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It you was crazy, NBA, you know? and. Like, we flying in the game at 7. We get there at, like, 4.30, and they like, Tori, you starting on Paul George tonight. Like, like it, like it's so much that people don't know what we go through. You know, it's it's tough, bro. So tough. I just embrace the story because I always remember, like, that's kind of, like, yo, it and, like, why you do it. You don't want to. Yeah, I get a I – uh, yeah, I have, a, like, a kind of similar story mm -hmm. that uh, – so it was my first year back to the States, right? Yeah. So uh, they told me my first year – just, you know, just you adjusting back to the NBA game, mm -hmm. adjusting back, you know, because back home, uh, it's physical, but it's a little yeah. bit slower, slower, not so fast. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, okay, I'm not starting. Sometimes I didn't even dress the first year. And then, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'm, I get to play sometimes. Sometimes. And then one day, uh, Coach Bud is like, TA, let me come to my office. I'll go to his office. Like, are you starting tonight? I was like, what? Like, he's like, yeah, it's Greek night. Like, you starting tonight. You, you yeah. start on yoke, on yoke, oh, yoke yeah. it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I'm watching film now. So now I'm like, I'm gonna run out to yeah, hustle, hustle and I'm trying to beat him to every spot, you know? So it's, it's that's how it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize that. People think it's just like, oh yeah, he doesn't play, so it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what right. he does. Or he doesn't play, or, or because he plays, only he, like, no, it does not matter. It if you're in the roster, you gotta stay ready. So you ain't gotta get ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's okay. Good to Denver. You ended up getting a spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ended up getting a spot. How was the feeling? Uh, It was good because, like, I feel like like everything kind of added up because after my first year in the G League, I killed it. I probably averaged, like, 18, 8 and 8, some crazy stuff. And that following year, they like, you're going to play Summer League. Mm. And I'm like, all right, 
I knew I was playing summer league with me, Malik. It was me, Malik Beasley, uh, like Tyler Lyon, like a couple other guys who just came from college. So I'm like, all right, I'm already one year in. I done played against the pros in college. I mean, in, in practice, killed the G League. I'm finna kill summer league. Like that was my whole mindset. Boom. Um, I like money, and I only had probably like eight thousand dollars in my bank account. So I'm like, I gotta get a, I gotta get a contract. I gotta stack this money up, right? So, um, I go to summer league. I kill it. They shut me down after probably like we had like two games left. They shut me down. My agent like, that's a good sign if they shut you down. You know what I'm saying? I might have had twenty one, eight and seven, like three games. Killed it. Uh, we wait on a call probably a week later. They like boom. They offer you three year four point eight. Oof. I said, yes, sir. I'm taking it. Like, I screamed. <laughs> like, I was so happy, bro. Like, Man. so excited. That feeling, bro, it felt like. Were you, were you in the hotel? Where were you? Like, where were you? he told you, like, I was contract. in L.A. I was in L.A. at the time. 2018, I was in L.A. I, like, screamed, bro, because I'm like, man, like, out of all, like, all the work, like, just traveling and just, like, doing rookie duties. You know how that was, bro. It's, Man, I I can only imagine my first. Like, yeah, I remember my, when I first, like, got playing my first NBA game. I was yeah. Like screaming at home. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's that feeling kind of brought me back to like, kind of felt better, or that same rush is getting draft I've drafted. Mm -hmm. Like even though I went fifty one, when I just seeing my name is like it's fifty one pick an NBA draft, like and your whole family in there. That feeling, that rush, you can't get it nowhere else. You know. So I got. I end up. They end up signing me. We waive Jameer Nelson. Mm. We trade Moody. Mm. Um. And Jamal is the only point guard on there. So I'm like, okay, I'm the second point guard. I got an opportunity. So I kind of fell into it. Um, but then we signed Isaiah Thomas, IT. Yeah. Boom, that year. But IT wasn't going to be able to play until February. So coach ain't had no choice but to trust me. So I had my opportunity. I was running the second unit. And we won 54 games that year. I averaged 10 off the bench. I was playing well. Like, we had a... Our whole second unit was me, Malik Beasley, Mason Plumley, Tory Craig, and uh, Trey Lyles. I think our, our is that team. is that the bubble year? No, that was 2018, 2019 season. 2019, gotcha. Boom. And after that, you know, IT came back. They tried to mesh meshes all together. You know, it wasn't really working out like that. Um, just style of play wise, and they end up just like, you know, just keeping me in the in the rotation okay. and kind of made my way. Every since then, so it's been cool, bro. Oh man, I just, yeah. it's, you have a inspiring story just mm -hmm. to put in the hard work. Yeah. Okay. So, fast forward to 2021. Mm -hmm. Wizards were still gonna stay with the with the Nuggets. You get traded. Now you yeah, get, yeah, yeah. You get traded. Mm -hmm. Got traded. Uh, you you don't have to you know you don't have to say anything you don't want to say. Nah, you know, for sure. You feel comfortable, I mean, but I'm saying. I mean, cat out the bag. I mean, I got traded. Um, I went to the the crazy thing about this, like I I've always like once I put my pride to the side as far as like you always say it, it's never gonna be me until it's you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was kind of eye opening. Like everything felt like you going right. You made the playoffs every year. You've been a Nugget. We then took this organization from not making the playoffs to making the playoffs. You've been having success. You just like, nah, like, no, I know it can't be me, boom, and then it happened. So I went to dinner with a few, I ain't gonna name drop who I went to dinner with, but important people, and they was like, you safe, you safe, you know, like. Oh, they I, said they said you safe? No, you yeah, safe. yeah, yeah, so um, that's what really hurt me the most, but then I looked at it like, you know, it's business at the end of the, at the, end of the day, and once I got that mindset, like, it ain't no love in this business, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of just like, boom, boom, but. I take my hat off to them because, you know, they took a 21, just turning 22 year old kid and put me in a position to succeed. Succeed, And I feel like I done like all I could really do there. And they put me in a position to be a starter. And that's all I could respect, you know, out of them. They could have put me in a situation where I was back to ground one and was the third point guard and having to fight, fight, fight. But they gave me opportunity and I always salute them for that. And I got so much love for the city of Denver. Um, the organization, who everybody, so um, that's how it kind of was. But I got traded in 29th at like six in the morning, like two days after my birthday, I believe, or something like that. So it was kind of wait, wait, where, where were you when you when you knew when you heard you was getting traded? I was well, we was back home in Denver. 
I was getting ready to go to the arena for a workout, actually. Like, I was about to go to the workout, and um, there's so much love there. They was like, man, you can still come in and get it in, you know, at the facility. But emotions and feelings was too high. I couldn't, like, just yeah, go. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, but. Um, so did you, wait, did you, did they call you, or, did the, or you found out? You know, some, some guys yeah. sometimes, they, people find out on social media. Too, yeah, sometimes. so, I mean, my agent called me. Um, and kind of told me what was going on. He like, I think you're going to Washington. Just stay tight, stay, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh man. And it was just like, everything in the room was just quiet and slow motion. Cause I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. I just moved into a new place. Everything just feeling like home now. And then boom, it was just, I wasn't in my place for like, like two and a half, three months. You know what I'm saying? So that was tough, but then social media came out and they was like, I started seeing tweets on Twitter and it was like, yo, it's official. So I'm like, boom. And then that's when I started getting calls from like the GM, um, you know, the president and all that. Then Kuz texted me like, yo, it's happening. Cause you know, me and Kuz, childhood friends. So it was yeah. just, everything was happening all at once. But then I kind of just took a step back and kind of just like took it for what it was. And like, it's me still being able to say I was a full-time starter in the NBA and that's, and that's something I can tell, you know, my family, my kids later on in life. And I think it'll be dope. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, guys and you guys out there, more of the story yeah. is business. Business. Don't, don't take it personal. Yeah. You know, emotions are for movies. And not for the not for the business space, you know. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um okay, watch the wizards, man. Yeah. City. Mm -hmm. They, I kind of feel like I saw you in the game, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're finding your groove. Finally, yeah. You know, the you didn't think you get to play with Kyle. Mm -hmm. You guys are childhood friends, you know. Um, big differences between mm -hmm. cities. Let's say cities, not let's not say team cities. Right. Yeah, it's a big difference. Um, I think uh, like Denver um, is like it's a, I would say like a smaller like city as far as like with less things to do unless you like going to the mountains and things like that to do mm -hmm. other stuff. So the teams are very supported like every single night, you know, like sell out at the ball arena, sell out the Broncos stadium. Like DC has so many things to do, so many, like it's a lot of museums, like people come to DC for more so I think just like historic things too. You know, you got the White House, yeah. you got the, everything there. So um, with DC, I just feel like they want that feeling back that when John and them was there and the games, I look, look back at their games, it was sold out, but I feel like you gotta just win there. And you, it's, yeah. you win, then you get more people to come out and show love and things like that. So that's the pressure I kind of feel just like. Just, just, just build it, you know, just build yeah. the culture, mm -hmm. certain culture. Of, certain culture, know, yeah. Uh, it's okay, you, you do this. Actually, I was meaning to ask you another question too. 2021, you commit to play for the Nigerian yeah. national team, man. Yeah, I was I was supposed to play. Uh, what happened? I had to get a PRP shot in my oh, knee, okay. and then it was it was gonna be too close to the season, and Jamal wasn't gonna be playing that year. So coach was like, "Yo, we got we can't afford you to go over there and mess something up, and now you out to start the season." So I kind of just like. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, you know, because yeah. I'm a you know I play with the national team too. I, yeah. I, I play for the Greek national team. But you know, I watched both national teams and Nigeria and the mm. Greek one. So I, I was like, oh man, you know, they yeah. have a lot of players who we play yeah. with in the U.S. that mm -hmm. they play there. So yeah. you know, Jordan Noir. Shout out to mm -hmm. Jordan Noir, yeah. uh, Milwaukee Bucks. But okay, do, do you think, you know, just this whole change is, you know, we always talk about mental health yeah. and how, and I know you're a big, mm -hmm. big, big advocate of it. How did you? How do you deal? How did you deal with this? Um, deal with what? So, so the, this whole this, transition, you know, like okay, yeah, yeah, it's up and down, you mm -hmm. know. And how did yeah. you? How did you? What's your interpretation of this? Uh, I think for me, um, I just feel like when you open your mouth and kind of just can talk to someone, because we kind of try to wear this Superman cape, because we mm. got, because we got, you know this image like as far as being NBA players like we Mr. Perfect guys you know and I feel like that's the narrative you know kind of like you make all this money you ain't got no problems I feel like that's how the world some for yeah. me you know that is not true I, exactly but from the outside looking in it's mm -hmm. like you mess up like 
we everywhere on stories. Like we, we're, we're human, bro, just like everybody else. So um, for me, once I've been able to just speak to people and open up and express my feelings to someone, um, I think it goes a long way. Cause once they see you do it, like I did a thing in Denver last year, um, I brought like 140 or like 100 kids or something to from the Boys and Girls Club who've been battling with mental health. And uh, they came to my game against San Antonio and I talked to them and just told them it's okay to seek help or it's okay to open your mouth and ask questions yeah. and get help. Cause the more you bundle it up, that's when you go do something that you regret and it could be a lifetime changing, you know, thing for you. So, and I just want them to know and want the world to know like, if we can do it with our stage and our platform, you know, I feel like it will be helpful for everybody and the youth and even grown grown people who look up to us as far as, you know, icons and heroes to that it's okay to have battles and and you can get through them. You just gotta be open, open about it and speak to who you need to and don't hold it in. Just just try to do you as sure. best possible. Yes, sir. Man, that was yeah. that's that's on point. That's that's sure. spot on. Um mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's let's get to business, as they say. Yeah. What do you What do you do outside of basketball? Man? Do you yeah. Invest? Do you, are you entrepreneur? Yeah. Entrepreneur, as they say, investor or you know. You so got so I got a, a couple things I'm doing right now. Uh, I just did the Barco. Um, it's a drink, sports drink. Okay. Um, I invested in there with uh, my childhood friend. You know, Kyle Kuzma. He kind of yeah, kind of yeah, kind of saw him. Yeah. And uh, you know, one of the strength conditioning coaches from the Knicks who Mumbai. But like, like a, I think he's on it too. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a it's a multi million dollar company. Um, okay. kind of brought some stuff to it just to um see where it goes. You know, in the long run, I actually like the drink and everything. Um, and I'm a y'all know I'm a big bowler too. I, I bowl like 200 range. I plan on doing a PBA this summer. You know, with CP, I talked to him about it, so I'm excited for that. You talk about wait, you said bowler. You talk about bowling. Bowling, bowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, in my in our team, we have one of the best bowlers, like Bobby Portis. Shout out to Bobby. You know, he, he's considered <laughs> he like he, yeah, okay, he's good. Yeah, yeah. He's good. I mean, I I've never seen him play, but the, you know, sources say sources say that uh, Wobbs and Sam <laughs> was on the analysis podcast. Sources say that he's good okay. At it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that uh, big time bowler off the court. Um, that's something I like to do, is just to have fun and kind of clear my head space okay. at times. Um, I'm also got some stuff in TD Ameritrade, um, the investment. Got, I'm looking for that to do big things later okay. in life. Um, yeah, and also I got my merch about to drop. Um, oh, nice. What, 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 uh, you say merch, so basically uh, your brand. Yeah, so my brand, things. yeah. The, is this through, is this the Monte Morris, like, yeah. dot com? Yeah, you can website? get it from montemores.com. The website is updated. Um, shirts should be, we starting off with shirts right now. Um, and then we gonna go to sweatsuits and apparel and things like that. So we've been working on it for like two, three years and we feel like this the perfect time to do it. You know, there's been a lot of thought into it. We got little quotes and things that I use kind of in my documentary. You can find, I got my pre-draft documentaries up all the way to the moment I got drafted. It's on YouTube. Um, you can just find that at, um, I put the work in. Monte Morris, it's like four documentary episodes. It's really good. I'm gonna watch it. It's yeah, good. it's dope. And um, yeah, so we got that. You can find that at montemores.com. And um, it's more than just shirts on there. It's kind of like my life story and kind of like my biggest quotes that I've used in my life. And just, you can see the mental health things, all the stuff we've done and all that on there too. So it's more than really just a website where you got to purchase things. You can go there for, you know, life lessons and kind of just like inspiration if you need looking for it. Right. Well, how, how so I know you guys are childhood friends with with Kyle mm -hmm. Kuzma and you guys invested together. Yeah. But what do you think about this whole uh, competition through the NBA? I mean, I know it's on the mm -hmm. court, but I think we should have more and more, more. guys invested with each other. Like, I, I get the you yeah. know, I get the the competitiveness on the court. Yeah, you know, it's hey, whoever knows me knows like I'm very competitive mm -hmm. and how so the court. But outside the court, this. You know, I think we should, you know, Do we have things. a platform. I think we should, usually you have guys who would do so much more, mm -hmm. say, as a collective. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I feel like 100%, like, we can go to Summer League and it's crazy. We go to Summer League, you see guys that you never really thought kind of liked you or 
anything like that. And you see them out and everybody like, what's up, man? You cool that way. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I ain't even know just you saying what's up to me like that. I probably know something about you that I thought I could holler at you about, but my pride was too big to say something, but I always oh, thought so you was dope. So I feel like it's more of a pride thing. Like mm. find your teammate. Um, it's kind of hard unless I see you out and then you show me this love and I'm like, yo, we just we could have we've been battling on the court. We could have had a different conversation a long time ago, but I feel like you know, it's it's a lot of pride into it. You, people be scared to reach out because they don't want to seem like. Hmm. I, that's what I feel. I don't um, know. It, it's, yeah. it's it's uh, it's spot on. I think it's hundred yeah. percent true about the pride. Mm. But if you think about it, it's not a lot of players when they stop playing, they don't hang out with each other. If you look mm. at you know look at the legends, you look at the shout out to the TNT uh, mm -hmm. panel too with that. Yeah. Uh, Charles Burgley, Shaq, Kenny. Kenny, Kenny and yeah. there, everybody. <laughs> Uh, you see, like, not I don't want to say only the camaraderie. Like they, mm -hmm. you know, they have a fraternity. It's I mean, when you when you live here, mm -hmm. it becomes a fraternity. If you if you notice it when you go overseas or you do this mini events outside mm -hmm. of the NBA season, yeah, everybody's like, oh man, man, how's oh, your, man. you know, how's yeah. the family? Everybody's kind of really really cool with each mm -hmm. other. But during the season, it's not that way. During the season, right? Hundred percent, bro. It's spot <laughs> on. It's crazy. So, okay, okay, so. So now we get to the the section that uh, you know I gotta ask you some questions and you know right. it's, it's, they're not it's not something crazy, but you just gotta pick one, right? Yeah. So the first one is pizza or Chinese food. Pizza. Why? Uh, I mean, I like Chinese food, but pizza just like it's like a brand thing. Like in my household, like growing up, pizza was the go to. Okay, so they got like they got like a good pizza in uh, Michigan. Is yeah, I mean we got like, Little Caesars, but that was like my <laughs> <laughs> growing up Little Stramboli. That was <laughs> okay. Okay. Was like, hey. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, next one is reality shows mm -hmm. or documentaries. Documentaries. Why? I think documentaries is more is more interesting. Um, I feel like you don't really. You can't really tell what's really coming in documentaries, and I think it's more raw, it's more, it's more straightforward. Um, for me, you learn more. Mm. Like, you don't, you don't like reality shows. You don't. I do. <laughs> just like, but if I had to pick and choose, yeah. I would go okay, documentary. Okay. Um, okay, I just, I just feel like you know, reality shows are something different these days. Like yeah. they, they take it to the next level. Hey, you know, yeah. so. You th you used to think that reality shows was was the real thing. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah, they no, call it reality. Yeah, reality. Shows. Yeah. You used to think like, oh man, it's the real life yeah. into this person's, you know. Mm -hmm. But okay, okay. So then I have uh, I gotta have some facts. Like I, you know, I go I read a lot and I have some facts, which I don't know. Maybe you know about them already, <laughs> but you don't. So, <laughs> would you like to learn about beavers or go or or goats? <laughs> beavers or goats? Yeah. Pick one. Um, I think I. Want to learn about beavers? Beavers. Okay. Yeah. So you know, like you know beavers. something about beavers. Okay, uh -huh. but you don't know. Let's yeah. See if you know this, right? So you know, beavers mm -hmm. used to be like the size of a bear. I could see that. You see that? Really? I could see that. Yeah. Whenever I say this to people, people go like, "What?" I could see that though. Yeah, because yeah. and they evolved like every animal and became you know smaller and smaller right. and smaller for them to adapt. But beavers used to got be like the long. Uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. used to they used to be like huge. Oh, really? Like, oh, that's crazy. If I saw a beaver, like, if I literally saw a beaver, yeah, the size of a bear, bro, I would be like, with those teeth too, like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's insane. But you know what? I'm 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 tell you the goat one too. Uh, goat as a the goat one. So so there's I don't know if now people might know this. So you know how goats like talk, like they bleat, yeah, right. So did you know that like you could be in a certain region? And goats bleed different. Like they talk oh, different. They talk, it ain't the same. So basically, goats have accents. <laughs> oh, that's lit. <laughs> that's lit. So, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. I was like, man, just because, you know, the word goat just mm -hmm. being, you know, greatest of all time. We, get, right. we keep saying it all this time. We keep saying, you know, about like all the athletes, you know. We talk about that. I was like, okay. Then I crossed path and I yeah. saw and I saw this. And I was like, so goats really have accent. They, it doesn't sound the same. Yeah. Like, okay, that's that's an interesting that's fact. That's might make them the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, you know, before we always go, we mm -hmm. always want to leave. You know, either leave our fans, our listeners, with a motivational quote. Mm -hmm. 
from you. I don't know if you have a quote or you have a story, motivational story that full, fills you up. You uh, know, and then it's been part of your journey or part of you, you know? I mean, you know, my motivation for me, you know, is really just my just my um, grandma, my mom. Just my grandma ended up passing death on my birthday in 2015. Um, Shirley Morris and then my mom is really just like my backbone, you know, not really having that father figure in my life. And my mom was working a lot and I had a lot, I had to grow up. I had to learn so much from my mom, you know, that dads usually do. So I always told her, like, I used to be bumping into the walls, playing ball when I was like 11, 10 in the house. And she was always telling me like, you need to, you better make it to the NBA doing all this bumping around the house. So I just always said like, once I make it, like, I'm gonna give her everything. I know it's kind of, that's the story mostly everybody say, but it kind of hit different because we grew up in so much, just the murder capital in Flint. And like, it was a lot of distractions that could have detoured me to go off path. And we stuck together, you know, through the thick and thin and yeah. the small apartments at times and things like that. So my motivation is gonna always be for her and I kind of play for her. So even like when I'm hurt, she always asks me, is you injured or you hurt? And I just be like, I, I'm a play, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, if she see, she still, I'm her hero, you know what I'm saying? As much as she is mine. So if I can just show her I'm tough, you know, can't nobody stop what we got. And I always, you know, pride man. myself on that. Man. By the way, she gave you a nickname too, right? She calls you Man Man? Man Man, yeah. Man, I've done my research now, right? <laughs> Man Man, what, what, yeah. But why did she call you Man Man? Uh, so, like I said, I used to be going to her practices and stuff. Okay. But like her her team, her, she coached girls and they okay. all, they came up with that name, bro, when I was like four or five years old. Like, they just said one day, she said one day, I was just running around and like, Man Man, get off the court. And then everybody in the community just, as I grew up, just Man Man. So if you ever come back to, Flint or yeah. anything, and you ask somebody like, hey, you know, Monte Morris, they can be like who, man, man, like everybody in everybody. the city, everybody. They don't yeah. even call me Monte, so it's dope. So you That's can cool. call if you call me that, you know, on the court or something, I'm gonna start laughing or something. So <laughs> no, nobody really I called me you, that. So you, That's dope. <laughs> oh man, it's dope. Hey, thank you so much for bro. sure. Bro. Thank you so much, much for for coming in. I know you got schedule is crazy mm -hmm. in the NBA, but just us being here, it's just. Is for the like the viewers or the mm -hmm. listeners just to get a another like perspective, you know. So I'm, I'm I'm glad. And again, guys, the the show is on its end. Thank you so much. If you want to listen to the analysis podcast, uh, if you want to see the video, you can see it on YouTube at the Goobles TV. If you want to see the clips, you can go on our socials, uh, Thanasis uh, underscore Ante forty three. You can go uh, Big Game Tay. Mm -hmm. Uh, to his profile, and if you want to listen to the podcast, I mean, it's gonna be probably on every platform. So you can, wherever you get your podcast from, man. Again, thank you so much. Oh God, much love. Appreciate. It.